Tonight on Country Squire Radio, we're talking Oriental Tobaccos. Oriental Tobaccos. That's right. Also, we've got a pipe question of the week that we changed last minute. So I can't remember off the top of my head. All this with the fact that we haven't done sound check yet. And that's what you're walking into this night on Country Squire Radio. Are we, we're live right now. We're live right now. <laughs> this is uh, picking my nose over I here. Know, I know, I know. <laughs> but so, all right. So, so, well, it's good. Well, it's good. We just got to adjust a few things and. <laughs> You know that I, I feel like this whole season has just been a season of uh, of adjustment of adjustments. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, is, you know, generally good, right? You know, I, I mean, yeah, new well, shop, lots and, of good things. Yeah, you know? new go, wife, go, new new wife, yeah. new, new new shop. Uh, things are great. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. You know, we're we're just trying to get it figured out, it's just, just, including just, our just, uh, just, yeah. these ri- these rhythms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but we're 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 doing. We're doing, doing good. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Boodles is on tonight. It is. It is. All right. So, uh, just a real quick, uh, as I mentioned at the uh, the the pre pre show, uh, doing a quick mic check. Hi, this is Bo York of the Bo York Brigade. Uh, next to me of the John David Cole Coalition. The John David Coalition. That is terrible. <laughs> is John David Cole? Hey, hey. hey. All right, we're coming is, through. Is that coming through okay? It seems to be. Okay, it seems to be. Let me make sure. I'm that sure the, we'll uh, destroy it uh, mid mid uh, the folks at home yeah. can hear us. Uh, Hold on, I got to turn the phone off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got to turn the phone off. That's that's what you got to do. This is great, but this, you know what this is, man. This actually takes me um, back. And for those who have never tuned in for a live show, this doesn't take you back. But <laughs> for those who have take who have been with right. us for a minute. Like back in the day, this is what you oh, got. This is how I got. Yeah, no, no. I just, I, you know, I have to turn the, I have to mute the phone because yeah. I know our 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 dear jackass friend Brian Levine <laughs> would, would would call occasionally during the live show. He he would call. There's kids watching. And man, it, no, I, well, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know that's that's maybe not as kosher as it is, but yeah, but right. that's a good way to describe Brian. Right, right. right. And, and so he, he would appreciate uh, that. And he he would. He, he and, and, you know his kids probably refer to him as that as well. As a, but, yeah, that is. True. Um, but but anyway, you know, so I have to mute the phone so people like Brian can't uh, can't interrupt. Can't us. try to throw us right. Off. No, that's, good. <laughs> that's good. All right, here we go. You ready for this? Ready or not. Welcome to Country Squire Radio. I'm Bo. And I'm John Davis. JD. Hey, Bo. Good evening, man. Good evening to you, sir. How are you doing tonight? <laughs> I'm doing great. Gosh, it's just <laughs> been such a wild few weeks, but uh things are going well, yeah. man. Yeah. Um, just lots of uh, you know, getting geared up for the fall here at uh here at the Country Squire. Um, moving some pipes, man. We had our um had our uh September Chacombe sale, and that was uh that was really good. Sold a whole bunch of, of uh pipes from St. Claude, France. And um, those, those were excellent and, uh, got some exciting events for the fall, you know, going to have our pipe night, uh, coming up here in about a month and, um, yeah, just rocking and rolling. Dude. That's good. Yeah. Dude. We're, 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 we're doing well. And man, November is upon us. So we're, I mean, you know, as, yeah, I know it's just nuts. Like yeah. we're, we're here in October. We're already talking about November, but it's, it's right here. And you know how the fall is. It's always, you know, one event after another. It's like, Hey, you know, Hey, what it's week season, what weekend are you busy? No, what weekend are you free? Mm, That's the mm, thing, you know, mm. it's so, okay. This, especially in the South, we got all these games and, you know, people just throwing events for no reason yeah, at all. Foot- Footballing us. People get wedded, you know, married and all this stuff. And yeah. it's just like, well, you know, at, at some point you just uh, have to resign yourself to, um, you know, just being, uh, being a slave to, to the calendar. <laughs> <laughs> it is crazy, man. So, but the, you know, the funny thing is, of course, you know, being, being down in the South, as, as you mentioned, we are, we, uh, you know, what we perceive as hot and cold is different from the rest of the country. I was, uh, I was up in, uh, Chicago, um, yeah. yesterday actually. And, and it's, it's so bizarre because in Chicago right now it is cold, like legitimately cold. And it, and it's, you know, it's October. It's, it, so it, anywhere else, maybe that would make sense. Yeah. But, right. And so that's the thing. So like I was, I was in Chicago, I was like, you know, freezing, not, you know, fr- freezing for a, a Southern guy in, in Chicago in October. And then I come here and I get out of the, uh, you know, get out of the airport when I'm all bundled up and I'm like, oh, snap, I'm sweating all of a sudden. Like, <laughs> this the way that, uh, that that fall hits us is just different. For yeah, no, I, I love it because you go in like our local, uh, you know, retailers or whatever. I mean, wh- you know, whether it's, you know, you name your favorite clothing store, right? right. So Gap or, you know, J. Crew or American Eagle, wh- wherever you shop, you know, it, and, and, you know, the nationwide retailers they'll pulling out their you know scarves and sweaters and you know warm uh tweed top hats and all this kind of stuff and <laughs> and like it's literally 92 degrees right like right, you right. know and so it's just disgusting you know it, it, and you know i just think to myself if i wore a turtleneck today um that would be one more reason for me to you know have to take a bath you know a, again before i go to bed so anyway yeah it's just nuts but by, by the way it, just a fun uh point of order here 
uh, you know, we we were kind of joking getting ready for the live show tonight. Yeah. Uh, and, and you know, just talking about all the insanity that comes with it. And I, I said, you know, well, I have to turn the phone off before we start uh, the show because I know that Brian Levine will call uh, to, to, you know, monkey with us and, and, you know, that kind of thing. Well, it, he, he is watching the live show tonight. He wants us to know that he would never, never call, uh, that he would just, uh, text constantly. Um, <laughs> that's, that's brilliant. And, uh, and, and so th <laughs> thank you, Brian. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I, you know, this is great because now I have one more thing to juggle during our, uh, yeah, that's, during our, uh, show notes and all that other that, stuff. That, that's what you want. That's what you want. That's what you want. It's also not true. Brian has definitely called you on the show. Oh no, yeah, he has, yeah. he has, he has, but they, yeah, this is, uh, this is, this is good. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> he sent me a little kiss, kissy lip emoji thing, which I, you know, we'll, we'll discuss that later. There's probably some good therapists that we can recommend them to. So, brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, <laughs> you know, so I mentioned, man, I was in Chicago, uh, passed by Erwin Reese, uh, Ewan Reese, Erwin, Erwin, Ewan, 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 Ewan. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've never heard of Erwin Reese, but maybe it sounds like a great new shop. Well, I know. Look, man, you, you pass by there and I got to tell you, like I, I, you forget how they represent out in that area and just the fact they've been such a stable in chicago for such a long time they've got like this massive sign with a with you know a, a pipe directly on it they've got you know the uh kind of the classic look and style and everything else and they just make such a statement on the street and they do i was they walking do. by and i was like you know what it is iconic because like the thing is you know I, mm, they that you, you know they're sitting on some stuff I, I should probably be careful about how I say this, but like, got to be some gems hiding up in there. Is that what you're saying? I'm I'm saying that like, you, you know, you, here's what it is. You know how there's the quote Disney vault. Yep. Well, yep. That exists in the pipe tobacco world and it's in Chicago. And that's all I'll say. <laughs> like, like I, I know this to be true. You're pretty sure it's there. I'm not sure what's in that vault. Right. I have my suspicions and I really wanted to go by and see if I could use the whole, like, you know, country squire radio yeah, card to see like, right. hey, let me let me pop back in there and say, see what you're sitting on. It's like show, it's like showing up at the Vatican, being like, yeah, I want to see that, uh, you know, Mary Magdalene stuff or whatever. I'm saying in the in, <laughs> in the era of the industry that we live in right now, if you're in Chicago, you need to be schmoozing because there's they know they're sitting on there's, some, there's something there. That's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, of course, we got uh, coming up here this month the Jackson Pipe Night. That's right. Uh, it's actually November 1st, but it's a month from oh, today. Gosh, that's uh, right. Yeah, Jackson Pipe Night. That'll be uh, here at the Squire Thursday, November 1st. Our, our good friends at Law DC uh, will be sponsoring that. Of course, you know, you hear Law DC, you're like, what is that? Well, that is synonymous with um, uh, the American version of Savinelli, Cornell and Deal, uh, GLP's Tobaccos, uh, Two Friends, Tobaccos, uh, Captain Earl's, lots mm, of different great tobaccos, mm. Briarworks tobaccos, um, and uh, and soon to be also, uh, in addition to Savinelli, Peterson Pipes. And so uh, they will be here, uh, you know, doing kind of a trunk show setup, our good friend Bill with them. And um, yeah, man, slow smoke competition, food, uh, live music, uh, lots of, lots of uh, you know, uh, libations flowing it'll be uh it'll be a good time yeah like so, you know i've already seen some of the always, tweets it's always a good time yeah seen some of the tweets it looks like that's going to be a great opportunity for a lot of folks to come into town for their pipe pilgrimage uh, especially in the new shop uh, for those that uh, have never come come to the country squire what a great opportunity what a great event to be here for uh and to compete and absolutely wipe the floor i will go ahead and say this right now you <laughs> You will wipe the floor with me. So for those of you who are ready to come in. But and, you've wiped the floor with me before. Yeah, I know. And, and, and so, and yeah. so you know, it, it's like A plus B equals C. Well, That's right. I mean, you know. Feel, By the feel, transitive property, you will have feel, also wiped the floor with John feel, David. Feel good about uh, about your, your um, you know, chances here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, um, the, in, the weeks, in the weeks leading up to it, I plan on, like, really kind of honing my skills and make sure I represent – uh, fairly decently like like when i start seeing that we've got so many different folks that are actually coming in from yeah. uh for their pipe pilgrimage as part of this event that's when i'm like okay <laughs> let, let me bone up real quick you know <laughs> let, me make, let me make sure that i don't like no exactly the yeah. first ever jackson pipe night i was uh it's like studying before the uh exam exactly like, pulling the all-nighter yeah but like the first ever pipe night that uh that i attended uh it was like i think within the first year of country squire radio so i mean i was a i was a fairly new pipe smoker in, in the sense that like I'd only just recently started trying to get back into it. And uh, I, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, I believe I was out within three minutes. Like I, Oh, I, yeah, you were the first one out. Yeah, I was definitely the first no, one and, out. And, and you were, I, I think it was actually three minutes and change. It was laughably bad. Yeah, it was, it was under four minutes. Because yeah. the thing is, if you're out within the first minute, something messed up with your match. If you're out within the first, like, three to four minutes, you screwed up. Like, yeah. like, no, yeah. like you don't you don't know what you're doing yeah and so that was uh that was a sham and uh, embarrassing 
and everybody was like, aren't you country squire? What? Well, you but know. you redeemed yourself eventually, you know? So eventually. There was, yeah, there's some good stuff there. I'm yeah. just saying, like, I'm always cognizant that, that that's there. But come <laughs> out and join us November 1st again here in Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, details available at countrysquireradio.com. I mean, um, Country Squire. Uh, uh, not country squire not yet. Yeah, no. we, we will have, uh, if you sign up for email list, though, which you can do at the countrysquireonline.com, we'll be sending out information then. So, um also, a few extra things. Of course, this weekend yeah. is uh, the Texas Pipe Show, oh. which, we're, which we're very excited about. And so uh, we won't be doing a, any kind of live recording there this year or anything, but uh, I'll be on hand and uh, just, you know, kind of popping around, probably getting some uh, interviews here and there. That should be fun. Um, but uh, really excited about this. They have, uh, for some strange reason and a very uh, incredible uh, lack of uh, you know, common sense. They invited me to put on their uh, their blending <laughs> seminar, which is going to be well, October. You know, when they catch you blending. Well, when, when they catch you blending, you know, uh, I mean, like that's they, a technique they, we hadn't seen before. And, and, you got to pass that around. They're right. Yeah, that's right. And they're all going to get in a circle, and you're going to learn and, uh, blending from John David Cole. <laughs> It'd be like, anyway, I so need some more boodle. <laughs> Yeah, just right there in front of everyone. Yeah, um, yeah. So uh, the, Give blending, the old Louis C.K. blending <laughs> blending, <laughs> blending seminar, uh, Tobacco Cabana. That's October fifth, uh, this coming Friday at six p.m. Tobacco Cabana is in Cedar Hills, uh, Cedar Hill, Texas, um, and uh, they are doing the pre-show blending seminar. <laughs> we are terrible, terrible people. <laughs> um, the pipe show, the actual pipe show. Uh, so you'll want to you'll want to skip the blending seminar because I'll be there. No, seriously, we hope you come. Um, it's also sponsored by Scandinavian Tobacco Group, yeah. and so they'll have a lot of good stuff from Lane and uh, Peter Stoke will be lots of great high quality ingredients there for that. Um, the, the the actual Texas Pipe Show October sixth. That's this Saturday. It's at Pop Safari Room in Fort Worth. Uh, great great location. Yeah, it was so much fun, man. Really cool uh, concept of a smoke shop. They've got uh, a really high quality wine cellar and uh, have beer. Uh, there to drink also some espresso drinks um uh, but then you know a great uh, humidor uh, smoking inside nice patio really really great atmosphere so um, the doors open at 10 o'clock that morning um the uh, slow smoke will begin at three and there will be a raffle uh that evening at five and so and the show will go till seven so really uh really good time what they want to be sure that everyone knows is um that uh they need you to sign up for the slow smoke competition beforehand. So I actually uh, today signed up. I got my ticket for the slow smoke competition. All right. Twenty five dollars. You're actually going to get a clay pipe with the uh, with the with the thing. Oh, so, interesting. So that'll be good. The tobacco will be provided by Cornell and Deal. Everyone gets a clay pipe, so that's fun. And um, and then the slow smoke competition will be that day at three. But if you go to TexasPipeShow.com, uh, you can uh, at the very top. There's a thing that says slow smoke contest. Click that. Uh, and it'll it'll take you to where you need to sign up to buy your ticket. So uh, really good. Help support all the great people that are putting on uh, this. And uh, Chris Dumelin, uh, you can find his contact information uh, at TexasPipeShow.com. He's the president of the uh, Lone Star Pipe Club. But they're, they've done a fantastic job coordinating other clubs in the Texas area uh, with this. And we're uh, we're proud to be to be involved so uh, that that'll be a lot of fun oh man it's gonna be a blast um, and uh look pop safari room like it's, it's a cool spot huh? it is one yeah. of those shops i mean you know I've, I've had the the privilege of being able to uh, visit a lot of different um pipe shops around the country and you know the every every single shop i've been to like there's been something about it that i've kind of taken away pop safari room is one of these places that like from every single angle it's not like i can't take one thing away i want to take like the entire shop away it's just it's amazing uh, and it is such a unique experience. And so, you know, there's a lot of reasons to go, you know, in terms of all of the great talent that you'll meet, in terms of the amazing community that's out there in Texas, in terms of being able to watch John David Cole blend in front of your eyes. Uh, all of those things are a very good reason to go. But Pop Safari Room, that's like that's like the icing on the cake. <laughs> like you, you're going for the cake, but I mean, it's let's be honest, spot. like yeah. that icing, whoo, it's like it's like that buttercream icing. It's when, it, when, so when people turn around, you just eat the icing by itself and yeah. throw the cake out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, no, you don't throw the cake <laughs> yeah, out. No, no, not in this case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you might gorge on the you might gorge on the icing. That oh, that's true. good. <laughs> man, all right. So a uh, little bit more. Uh, we got, man, we got a lot, lot of stuff well, going it's a on. Housekeeping, yeah. So, no, that's okay. So we've mentioned the last couple of episodes. We have announced, of course, the 2018 Custom Cobb competition is on, and the theme this year is Thanksgiving. Maintaining that kind of holiday esque no, approach good. that we did last year. This yeah. year, the focus is uh, is on Thanksgiving. And uh, yeah, so the, the what's up? <laughs> what? I'm just like, what if we did a, a slow smoke or a, a, a custom cob competition? 
uh, one year that had nothing to do with the holiday. Just nothing to do with the holiday. Just like said, okay, this year it's, it's um, uh, March fifth, seventh. March seventh. Oh, it's the 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 slow smoke com or the the, the custom cob? the custom cob competition is like uh you know the Ides of March. Oh, interesting. Oh, or, that actually or, sounds kind of cool. <laughs> or like you know, or, or you know, like we're gonna the custom cob is based on Helen Keller or something. Interesting choice. I mean, I'm just saying, you know, you could do all kinds of stuff. You could do all kinds of stuff with it, yeah. but we are doing holidays and this year, of course, <laughs> it is Thanksgiving. Now, we've uh, mentioned that, of course, if you go to Facebook right now, um, last week, that you'd be able to find the rules. And yes, today, the, the rules went live, so you can find them there. Also, we're going to run them down for you right now on the show. So here's what you need to do. Country Squire Radio, once again, hosting the holiday-themed custom cob competition for the Thanksgiving bent. Uh, so here's the rules. One entry per person. You will need to use a Missouri Meerschaum pipe as the base pipe. That's right. All pipes must be smokable. Get creative is crazy, but they it must still be still has to be smokable, smokable after you customize it. That's right. right. Contestants will need to send their pipe to the Country Squire. Uh, the address is 1855 Lakeland Drive, B10. And, of course, if you can't find that, you can find it, of course, on the uh, website. You can also find it on uh, the Facebook page. We posted it there. Uh, just do a search for the Country Squire yeah. in Jackson, Mississippi. You'll find the address. Yeah. Actually, that's the old address, isn't it? Uh, yeah. No. The, so the address... That is, is the old address. It is the old address. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our, our current address is 1855 Lakeland Drive, Suite C, as in Charlie 10, Jackson, Mississippi, 39216. I'm going to get that updated as soon as possible. You will, and yeah, it'll yeah, be fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Wow. <laughs> and then she's got to sneak down right by me. Oh, that's good. Uh, all entries must be here at the Country Squire but by November 12th. The winner is going to be announced on a very special Thanksgiving episode, which will be recorded on the 19th and posted on the 22nd. Uh, that's the, the Monday before Thanksgiving. Yeah. So it'll yeah. be a, it'll be a fun time, much like we did last year. If you yeah. got a chance to listen to that, then you know what I'm talking about in terms of the rewards. So, uh, you know, glory uh, and, and immortality. There and is that audio podcast oh, format. That, that's right. Yep. But all pipe entries will be featured on the Country Squire as well as uh, photographed and displayed online via the shop's Instagram and Facebook channels. Winners will get a custom, the winner rather, will get a custom Cobb trophy along with a few other swag items from uh, Country Squire Radio. And all the pipes that are sent in will be auctioned and sold after the contest is concluded with all profits donated to the Ronald McDonald House. So that's what you need to know. That's all the rules, regulations, and such uh, as they are except for the address which we will get updated on facebook but otherwise that's what you need to know can i sweeten the pot oh my gosh yes y is that absolutely okay? man what you got what you got well you, you know we we recently had our our esoterica and germain drop oh and, and so and you know it's good because our website actually did not crash this time so our our dear friend <laughs> pylorns uh james uh who's in texas who i'll see this weekend yes sir uh you know he he's done a good job uh you know getting our website uh, esoterica proof basically but you know we we happen to have a couple of leftover items and um i, I don't know may, maybe i'm thinking for our winner they deserve you know a, a, a beautiful trophy but um i don't know maybe something maybe something else you're saying my solid gold painting trophy is not good enough you no, want to throw I, no, down I, some it, premium no, tobacco it, in it, there it, well? it is good enough it, it is good enough but but maybe someone you know would want something else that they would be proud to in share case the hot want. glue doesn't fall it in, like in, falls apart unless it in, in case it doesn't <laughs> fall apart maybe maybe there's something else that they'd like to get in addition to that i like they, it. i mean obviously they won't be as proud as the trophy but you know, uh, you, you, they might enjoy a little Penzance on the side. Oh, and so um, I don't know. Why don't we? Why don't we say the winner gets a gets a half pound of Penzance in the original bag? All right, y'all, get out there, get your Missouri Meerschaum pipes, get to work, get your paints, get crazy it's with exciting. it. It's exciting. Yeah, it's exciting. No, it's good. Uh, the 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 prizes have never been higher. The stakes, the man. stakes have never been higher. Yeah. So uh, the so, turkeys and the pilgrims and the and all that. I can't wait to see. Yeah. Get crazy. We, yeah. we, we can't wait to see what y'all do. Oh, that's good. It's, it's going to be, be, gonna, gonna be exciting. Yeah. Speaking of excited, man, I'm excited for tonight's show. We're talking Oriental tobaccos tonight. We are. We're on the Oriental Express. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's just too easy. Uh, yeah, man. So, you know, it's it's interesting. We had uh, a, a, someone write in. I think it was actually on our Country Squire Radio uh, Squire's Lounge on Facebook. And someone oh, yeah. wrote in uh, recently. They were talking about, um, you know, I constantly hear... Uh, you know, folks referencing that blends feature Oriental tobaccos. 
and and you know it's like it, the guy was like what does that mean like that there's a bunch of different oriental leaves and so like when you say oriental tobacco and i can't remember who it is and if you're listening i really um apologize i'd love to reference you personally because we love when when a lot of this is user content driven that means a lot to us and uh, is helpful uh so anyway thank you for for who you are um but you know the person was like look there's a you know we're um there's all this uh the oriental tobacco like what does that mean there are all these different oriental leaves so when you say oriental tobaccos which ones are you talking about and uh like who you know uh, what's the difference between this one and that one so we thought we'd just unpack that a little bit yeah um and and talk about that and so uh oriental tobaccos these are typically uh tobaccos that are considered indigenous to the mediterranean region and so you know when we think mediterranean region we're thinking um you know, of course, that eastern portion, think, uh, you know, everything up from uh, Greece, uh, Macedonia, Bulgaria, all the way down through uh, kind of that, what we call it the Levant region that, uh, you know, into uh, Syria, Turkey, um, you know, uh, that that area as well. And then, of course, I guess you could include Cyprus there. I was um, told also. there'd be no geography. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to disappoint <laughs> you, uh, to, to, to disappoint you thoroughly. Um and so tobaccos that are indigenous to this to this area. Now, would you throw Latakia in there? I guess you could. Uh, Latakia is uh, the, if I'm remembering right, uh, the shekel bent leaf that has been smoked to impart it with that particular flavor. Right. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, you could throw that leaf in there with uh, with that. But uh, in general, these tobaccos are are from that area. Well, they're all from that area. And so. Um, occasionally you'll hear these referred to as Turkish tobaccos, um, you know, a Turkish blend, Turkish, you know, there, yeah. there are specific Turkish leaves that we, uh, refer to and, you know, but, but then also, you know, some folks typically will just kind of refer to these as Turkish blends. That's kind of a, uh, anachronism, I guess, because, you know, a lot of that area was controlled by the Ottoman empire, thus the Turks. And so you think of all that area as Turkish tobacco. Uh, don't tell that to someone from Greece though. I think they would probably have an issue with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. In Greece, you know, we, we oftentimes would order Greek coffee, but we'd say Turkish coffee, but constantly get corrected, like, no, Greek coffee. No, that's <laughs> like, right. Like, no, that, that, that's right. Yeah. yeah. And then they'd spit in your coffee and give it to you. That's well, Turkish coffee to a Greek. And, you know, we <laughs> we here at Country Squire Radio is big fans of Tolkien, also big fans of Lewis. So, you right. know, growing up, we heard all about Turkish delight in uh, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. No, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. The, the candy, right? The, right. The squishy red candy. Yeah. So they yeah. serve that with Greek coffee uh, or Turkish coffee. And but but the thing is, they don't call it Turkish delight. And we made the mistake of trying to order Turkish delight several times over and getting blank stares. But you know what? They knew what we were talking about. Anyway, that's that's a whole aside. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, if we um, can kind of peel back the layers of what what is there in the Turkish tobaccos, we can at least kind of understand um, what folks are referencing when they when they talk about that. So um, and, and we assure you, if you ever serve Turkish delight at the Country Squire, they will probably have uh, no Turkish tobaccos in there, although we make no promise. <laughs> um, blending components, uh, these Turkish and Oriental tobaccos, they're uh, typically seen as blending components. They're they're known as for their sweetness, their strength, uh, typically uh, nutty flavors. Um, you've got um you know, uh, a, a zestiness to them. Sometimes uh, you'll get a mustiness. There's a lot, a lot going on here. What you're not going to find is something that uh, is super high nicotine, uh, super, super strong. Uh, but it, it, the flavors are very distinct and very, and, and, and tend to be very strong. So I'm doing something tonight in uh, kind of uh, with this episode, I'm smoking in my uh, clay pipe here, this little clay cutty I've got. I'm smoking yep. straight Izmir, um, which I've got some beautiful uh, pipe, here. by the way. Yeah, beautiful I mean, just pipe. Classic look, but beautiful. I lo love this pipe. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, but just smoking some straight Izmir, this is not typically a tobacco that you want to smoke straight. Uh, it's a tobacco that uh, is incredibly uh, aromatic. You'll get some floral notes to it. Uh, there is kind of a a sourness that'll that'll hit the back of your tongue that's it's very pleasant actually but it's just not something that uh you find in a lot of tobaccos but you know again you're not really smoking this straight typically this is a this is an ingredient but i mean is that because it's not for the faint of heart or because you have to have a palate to really fully appreciate it or is it just simply like I you think, don't you don't eat paprika 
because it's paprika. Yeah, no, I think I think it's all the above. Yeah, I mean, I think you 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 know, I guess you could if you wanted to, but it's something. <laughs> right. uh, yeah, it, it's it, in some way is it interesting enough to smoke by itself? Well, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe not. But yeah. but then also, you know, there's a um element of the, it's kind of overwhelming the perfumey uh, nature of it. Not in a not in a Lakeland tobacco rose water way, but a in the um in a kind of a floral way. Uh, there's a, uh, there's a perfuminess to it that can be kind of overbearing if you smoke it by itself. But, uh, but I enjoy it occasionally, you know, as I've talked before on, on the show, I like to smoke blending ingredients, uh, here and there, just so I know, kind of, you know, familiarize myself, reacquaint myself with, uh, kind of what you're dealing with there. And I encourage other, you know, we've talked uh, the other day on our, uh, blending episode, uh, we talked about, um, you know, the importance of doing that. So, yeah, I, so I, I would recommend that. Um, but, the, you know, Turkish or Oriental leaves are, are typically blending components. These uh, are used in, you know, varying proportions, but generally small proportions. Um, it's a common ingredient in high quality cigarettes. And so you think about people scratch their head. They're like, what? But you think about, look, you know, look at all those old camel cigarettes that talk about the Turkish Turkish cigarettes, Turkish tobacco, I mean, you know, that type of thing. Those are um, in very high quality, especially the early cigarettes that came out. Um, Turkish leaf was predominant there, and or, or at least a very high percentage. And you still see that somewhat today. A, a lot of the Turkish leaf or an oriental leaf that is out there has been gobbled up before it hits the pipe market. Hmm. It's got a lot of the stuff is gobbled up by the cigarette market. And so, you know, the, it's being, uh, you know, blended in with uh, different types of cigarettes, particularly high quality cigarettes. But, you know, it's it's a uh, it's being put into uh, the blend with those to give it more of an aromatic kind of floral uh, flavor um, and uh, just to make the cigarette tobacco taste a little more nuanced. I mean, I get that it's a mass situation. Like, you know, if you think about the benefit of buying in bulk gives you access to, you know, products that, that other sure. people might not. I mean, yeah. you know, we talk about this even with when you go to like, you know, larger pipe shows, people that go in and like, oh, I'm just going to buy up the table, end up getting all the, the pipes before anybody else even gets a chance to see them. So from that standpoint, it makes sense. Frustrating, but it makes sense. To me, it would seem with the premium tobacco, though, can't can't pipe tobacco blenders get like the first, like like if you want the just best a, of the just best. Just a little bit, right? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> just throw, throw me a bone. For the here. culture, if nothing else. Throw like, me a bone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot of, uh, a lot of even your most premium uh, tobacco blenders um, for the pipe world have trouble getting some of these leaves uh, because, you know, it's just uh, they're small batch leaves anyway. Uh, th these leaves are, you know, just not particularly uh, readily available as time goes on, less and less tobacco is grown. And um, but then, you know, you're you kind of have the big guys swooping in, taking up a lot of the stuff. And so even though the pipe market is is large ish you know it's it's not as big as the other. And so, sure. um, you know, the the other guys gobble up a lot of the inventory. Um, and, and so, you know, you've got, uh, this situation where there's a ton of different leaves that are out there, uh, but they all have, you know, some varying characteristics to say, you know, somewhat, but, but they also have a lot of commonalities as well. They're typically, uh, kind of aromatic, uh, floral, uh, sweet and sour. Some people say, uh, there's a mustiness to them. They're just a very uh, distinctive tobacco that you'll see in a lot of English style blends, um, you know, they're, they're kind of lurking in a lot of different places, but, um, common varietals of, of Turkish or Oriental leaf, uh, include Basma, uh, Drama, Xanthi, Samsun, Izmir, Yaniji, and Katerini. Uh, these are different leaves that come from, you know, again, places anywhere from, uh, Greece, Macedonia, Turkey, uh, Syria, uh, Bulgaria, uh, you know, they, they have leaves for, that come from all these different regions, um, Typically, the leaves on these plants are very small, and, and they're harvested uh, when they're relatively young. And so small leaf, uh, not particularly mature, and so lots of flavor, uh, lots of, uh, you know, uh, power as far as the uh, the taste of it goes, mm, but not mm -hmm. you know you're not going to have that rich. Think about the you know you're thinking about uh, Virginia tobaccos. So you have these big, uh, rich, uh, velvety, thick, oily leaves. You know you you have less of that here uh, as you do in the um, uh, you know w with those. This is going to be a smaller, more uh, pungent kind of leaf. Um, a lot of these tobaccos because they're uh, hard to find. 
you'll find them in what they call a Turkish ribbon or a blended ribbon or a Oriental ribbon uh, blend or something like that. And so what that means is that because it's hard, let's say, um, let's say you're a tobacconist and you want to use some Oriental tobaccos to blend with. Right. Well, you may not be able to get, you know, five pounds of uh, Yeniji tobacco or uh, Samsung tobacco or Bosma tobacco because all these varietals, even though there's little differences uh, in them that you'd love to use, um, you, you know, these tobaccos are very limited. They're hard to get and, and you know, there just is not a huge availability of them. Sure. And so what, they, what the folks do a lot of times is you'll, they'll, they'll market a blended ribbon. And so what that is, a blended Turkish ribbon, McClellan did this for years and we loved it. Um, and there's other sources for it too now. But what they do is they take all these tobaccos, the ones that they can you know, get most easily and readily available, and they'll, they'll actually blend them together. And so you're getting kind of a hodgepodge oh, interesting. of all okay. this. So it's, it's almost like if there was a tobacco indigenous, let's say, to the southeast United States. And you had one in Mississippi and Tennessee and Alabama and Georgia. And each one of those tasted a little different. But they were all pretty similar. Um, and so, it, 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 you know, one year you might have more Tennessee. The other year you might have Georgia. Um, but what they do is they, because of the availability reasons, they kind of just take all that, blend it together. And then you've got a, a relatively consistent, consistent yeah. product that comes out year after year. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't the kind of side benefit to, to McClellan as well is that since they were kind of controlling that and setting that, they were able to maintain you know, like that premium Oriental for when, you know, say the holidays came around and oh, yeah. the ways that they made their, their specific stuff. Oh yeah. Well, and, that, and that's the other thing, like the, no judgment. I'm just saying that was kind of a benefit to them in, sure. in that kind of, uh, yeah. Um, and, and, uh, distribution and process. The, the big guys, if they've got connections and that kind of thing, they're going to get access to, uh, you know, McClellan had a couple of Puro, if you can call it that tins, you know, where they were using uh Caterini classic or Unigi Supreme. These were, uh, you know, tobacco tins that were featuring these particular uh, oriental leaves that I think were incredibly good uh, and, and we miss them. But you'll still see those occasionally. You'll see other uh, blenders that will find uh, particular leaves uh, and, and do that. What's a lot of fun, you can actually uh, look online and, and go find some of these leaves yourself. And so if you want to, you can actually order whole leaf uh, in, you know, if you wanted to get, uh, you know, Bosma or Yaniji or um, uh, the uh, Izmir, you, you know, you can actually order that and actually shred it yourself at your house, which is kind of kind of fascinating. In already some cooked? Sense, uh, yeah, yeah it, well, it's already cured. Yeah, cured, and yeah, so yeah. in in some sense, uh, you know, the whole leaf in some ways is kind of easier to find for the consumer than the shredded leaf, amazing, uh, which is interesting. And so, you know, for we have access to some things on our end that make it a say. little easier for us. But, but for the consumer, the end consumer, uh, you can actually get the whole leaf on some of these Orientals easier than you can the 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 shredded leaf, which I think is is fascinating. Huh. Um, so uh, a little pro tip there for uh, yeah, kind yeah, of as a follow just, to the blending at something home. To, yeah. Something to think about. Interesting. Yep. Yeah, uh, yeah. They, there's various uh, you look, you know, search at your own. Uh, peril, but there, you know, there's all kinds of uh, whole leaf websites online where you can order uh, different tobacco leaves and um, and just experiment with if you'd like. Um, it, the one that is relatively easy to find and it's kind of a uh, common state uh, for uh, pipe enthusiasts is going to be Izmir. Um, and we use a lot of Izmir here at the Squire. We use some other leaves too, but Izmir is kind of our, our staple go-to Oriental. We mm. love it. Um, it. It does have that uh, floral kind of perfumey uh, and uh, flavor, there is a, a lingering um, nuttiness that I think is really pleasant. But uh, it's a tobacco that, uh, you know, goes in. Uh, it, it's meant to be used, I think, in small doses. It's not mm. something that you want to smoke uh, a whole lot of. And so um, anyway, uh, we've got some here tonight. It's just a very uh, you, you might confuse it with, a, a you know, a dark fired burley or a, a maybe a dark uh, virginia or something of that nature it's uh it's particularly light it's one of those that's going to be kind of dry uh but a but a great tobacco lots of flavor uh these tobaccos tend to have low nicotine um and uh you know again are going to have that uh kind of sweet and sour complex uh you know characteristic to it so um anyway just pulling the curtain back on orientals a little bit yeah that's uh, that's pretty much it i'm curious so for for a tobacconist like yourself like when you're when you're blending a new tobacco when you're coming up with something that's gonna you know i mean you're constantly rolling out some some new blends and or not depending on who's listening 
uh, and what the current rules and regulations are. Uh, but but you know, as someone who's constantly experimenting and that sort of thing, when you go for an Oriental, like, right? What are you looking for? Like what? Why why are you going to that Oriental? Yeah, I, I think you know, an Oriental in general is you're looking for something to add just one more layer of complexity hmm. to what you already have. You know, because they are so distinctive and particular um, that you know you're 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 looking at a palette where you're like, okay, this is a, uh, this is a blend that has maybe a lot of body, um, but it's, it's lacking the little, the, a, a little tingle is <laughs> something that that's the technical uh, scientific, yeah, term, yeah, by the way. Yeah, but, good. but you know, it, it's lacking maybe that little, uh, that, that little sharpness on the very end of the puff or on the very end of the retro hail or, uh, you know, something maybe, um, you know, after a couple minutes, the lingering taste is not quite what I want it to be. Uh, the room notes different, you know, and so you're, you're, it's like a lot of leaves where you're considering these things, but with Orientals, it's, it's kind of, Orientals are good for fine tuning blends that, because they're so distinctive. They're just very interesting. Um, and so if you put some into, you know, any kind of blend, you're going to get uh, just a very, uh, it's almost like moving the needle, just a very small amount. You know, this is uh, tobacco that, um, you know, a little goes a long way, but it can, yeah. it can add a lot of, a lot of good stuff. Good so, stuff, man. Yeah. Yeah. Oriental tobaccos. Yeah. Excellent. Well, you know, the great thing of course is with, um, you know, kind of trying to identify that complexity as you kind of expand your palate, it's going to be important to make sure that you're picking up all those various flavor notes. And of course, if you're doing so, you know, you got a, you got a nice little clay pipe and everything, which is, which is pretty and everything it's, it's that's fine it's fine yeah uh but if you want to do so in style while also making sure that you get a great great quality smoke and make sure you pick out all of those complex notes whether you're adding them or not you need to be smoking a great corn cob pipe from our good friends at missouri Mirsha. that's right that's right <laughs> <laughs> tonight we recommend uh very heartily the huck finn corn cob pipe uh for all your tasting pleasures uh Ooh. the folks at missouri Mirsham, they do such a good job making high quality corn cob pipes and of course you get a very pure consistent flavor from a cob uh they're inexpensive it's very uh readily available and um and something that they take a lot of pride in and so you'll be happy with it too but uh this particular pipe the huck finn i love it it's a great tasting pipe because the bowl is it's smaller, but it's not terribly small. And so if mm -hmm. you're really getting into tobacco, you're trying it, but you're like, okay, this, I could make this a full bowl. Let's keep going. Um, you know, that Huck Finn, it's, uh, it's kind of like the Bing's favorite of the, of the corn cob pipe world, right? It's, uh, it's got that little longer stem on it. The, the bowl is, uh, is small, but, but generous enough. And, um, it's just a very, a very high quality tasting pipe. And so uh, typically with those longer stem pipes, the smoke is going to cool down enough for you to appreciate the uh, flavor nuance a little more. Um, and some of those uh, complexities will come out where, where they don't in other pipes. And of course this pipe shines with that. So um, uh, yeah, great, great pipe from Missouri Mearsham and I highly recommend it. Yeah. Don't forget, of course, with the corn cob pipe competi competition going on, it must be a Missouri Mearsham pipe. So who knows? Maybe a Huck Finn is Could the, be the perfect winning, uh, baseline the, the, pipe. That's right. Yeah. For kind of customing up your cob and making sure you smoke it as well. So if you do have a Huck Finn, be sure to smoke it this week. Tweet yourself in doing that. We'd love to retweet those out. It's a great way to let the good folks at Missouri Mearsham know. We appreciate them for sponsoring this show. Pipe question of the week. All yeah, right, this man. is this is an interesting one. This is a good one, man. So this was coming in from uh, Jason. Jason writes in and says, "Hello, John, David, and Bo. My question is an environmental one. I love smoking my pipe and do so multiple times a day, most days. La uh, lately, I've become more environmentally conscious, and I'm trying to eliminate more and more unnecessary waste." Do you know of a pipe cleaning method that isn't just running a cleaner down the stem and tossing it later? I generally make my cleaners last for a few good runs before tossing them, but in the end, they still get thrown out. I've also looked into recycling them, as here in my city, it's, uh, it is fairly easy to recycle most anything, but pipe cleaners seem to fall in that gray area of things that don't really recycle well. Thank you, and uh, thank you for taking the time to read Happy Smokes. And again, that is from Jason Breeden. Yeah, uh, this is an interesting question. We brought it on air because I am hoping that someone else in the Country Squire Radio community will... It's a classic uh, John David doesn't know the answer. Well, <laughs> exactly. Well, we'll have an answer to this. I, You know, uh, the, the, the best thing I can think of, Jason, here uh, is the reusable shank brush. Uh, now, with the shank brush, of course, the uh, it's, it's going to be too large, typically, to go into your stem... Uh, all it's good for really is scrubbing out the shank of the pipe. And so, mm. uh, but you can use that. It's washable. And so it's something that you could use over and over. Um, have you tried washing a pipe cleaner? I've never tried washing a pipe cleaner. I but, can't even imagine. But maybe you can. I would. I mean, I, th but that's the thing. I, I, I don't know. You know, um, 
I, I I don't know. I'm just thinking of the consistency of most pipe cleaners after going through the washing machine. Just sounds. But maybe you know maybe you're hand washing. I mean these are like delicate fine you know china or something. So you sure. So you're, so you're uh you, you know you're you're hand washing these pipe cleaners. Um I don't know. I would I, say I mean if if they're I'm curious to see if if the community has something because to me it sounds like. That might actually make for, you know, we in the pipe community here. disgusting smoke, right? Well, no. <laughs> what I was going to say is we in the pipe community course, we, we love our accessories. If you didn't know you loved accessories you and, and yet you were getting into the pipe community, now now you know you love your accessories, right? You can't you gotta have up. all the knickknacks. Exactly. Yeah. So the idea of some sort of like custom brush or something of that nature, the idea of some sort of custom brush or some sort of custom tool for cleaning out your pipe, uh, I can see that actually being an interesting product segment. Yeah. So I, just yeah, throwing that out there for I, the more entrepreneurial. I don't know. You. We, you know, I guess we do have folks that come in occasionally and look for, uh, man, I'm going through a lot of pipe cleaners. What am I doing? Well, well, I mean, you, you do go through a lot of pipe cleaners. I mean, there's, you know, tobaccos have moisture in them. There's uh, saliva. There's uh, the, you know, kind of uh, dottle and juice and all those other things. Uh, you know, I, I would point you to the shank brush, which is reusable. You can kind of clean it out a little bit and reuse it in the shank. That doesn't help you with the stem. Uh, with the stem, uh, you know, maybe you would try some, uh, you know, hot water solution or some pipe sweetener uh, to just kind of flush it out through there. But there again, there won't be any kind of scrubbing effort. So I don't know. Um, yeah, I, if, if you're out there, if you're another environmentally conscious smoker that has thought about this particular issue, I'd love to, uh, love to get your feedback on that. Yeah. Let us know what you think. Uh, yeah. to, uh post that to the Facebook. We'd love to, to hear whatever suggestions or, yeah. um, practices are out there. Do that, you, do you reuse your pipe, pipe cleaner? Like, like, is that, have you reused one before? Only if it's lightly after I use it, if it's kind lightly, of in a pinch type lightly, situation. No, well, no, you know, if it's lightly soiled and I'm you typically cleaning the same pipe out, you know, yeah, uh, you know, running it. Maybe I use the cleaner uh, in the stem and the shank, and it's not heavily soiled, and so then I'll turn around and use it for the bowl. Okay, uh, sometimes I'll do yeah, that. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, but I yeah, uh, as far as one of these, we've got these old timers that come in here, and they'll they'll reuse a pipe cleaner four and five times on the same pipe. And at some point you look in this pipe cleaner and you're thinking, what's the point? <laughs> like that's disgusting. It's like, you know, cleaning a, a plate with a dirty dish rag. Like, well, you know, you don't, it doesn't really make a difference. Yeah. At some point so, you're reapplying the, the, the soot the, back. Right. To the, to yeah. The, so I, I don't know. Yeah, you know, I, 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 I don't, you know, maybe after, after, you know, just special cases like that. Actually, I, I kind of appreciate both this question and your, your, your honesty right there, because I have reused pipe cleaners and I always thought that was like a tacky thing that I was doing. So well, I'm glad that you know, this is a safe space. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I'm glad to... here. And so you can bring, you can bring that out. Yeah. That yeah, yeah. It came we more. Probably, honestly, it's probably pretty common yeah. you know, for folks to reuse pipe cleaner. I just yeah. don't, you know, particularly. Yeah. Cool. Well, Hey, if you've got a, if you've got an answer, let us know. And uh, thanks Jason for the question. If you've got a pipe question for us, send it in show at country radio.com. Again, that's show at country radio.com. Quick fire questions. All right, man. Quick fire questions, of course, brought to us by our good friends at the Tent Society. More on them in just a minute. All right. So these are coming in from listener Dylan. This is uh this is fun. Dylan has for us a freaky Friday edition of quick fire questions. This is us uh, uh wearing each other's hats, or you wearing my hat. Oh, and me no I see. Hat. <laughs> All right, you ready for oh, this? This will be fun. All right, yeah. here we go. Okay, okay. All right, so. Would you like? I guess. Like, would you rather? Would you rather JD running Pottery or Bo running the Squire? Wow! So I can't think of a faster way for two businesses to bomb to fail. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll be honest. You know, I, I think like from a technical standpoint, I literally have no idea what you do from a bookkeeping standpoint i literally have no idea what you well, do that's true we'd be out of product here and like i'd be like how do we get more of this stuff i i, I don't know right yeah, yeah call some farmer that grows like you know burley and then i would end up <laughs> buying can i tell you so i used to be a retail manager like like yeah you know i always forget that i, I do yeah. i do i was i was uh in yeah, retail I for quite some forgot time about that but like like i have i i failed upwards in many respects. Like I, I got like one store where we were just killing it and just doing great, great stuff. But before I got to that level of, uh, of kind of understanding, like I, I was terrible. Like I was buying like, like $800 printers by accident. <laughs> like, like I'm terrible with like managing that kind of stuff. And so uh, I I'm, I'm in no, no, it took me a long time to figure it out. And I forgot it the day I got out of retail. Okay. So. Well, <laughs> Our answers, our answers are: I would actually rather Bo run the Squire 
than me run Pottery. I'd rather have John David run Pottery. So yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, that 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 shows that uh, our our faith in the there other. There you go. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> uh, JD taking care of a kid or Bo taking care of tobacco Jesus hair. <laughs> Man, I want that hair. I, I I'm sure you'd be great with the kid, but I want that hair. Yeah. I I I would um, I would rather take care of a kid. I think you'd be a great dad. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, I, I feel like this uh, question, you know, presupposes that maybe I can't handle it. I, I you know, it was uh, when I was reading that, I, I felt slightly insulted for you. Yeah, um, that's okay. My yeah. kid's gonna like <laughs> eat you know, the, 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 the ice cream and you know, freaking, I don't know. Years eat. years later, John David Cole Jr. is listening to this, thinking like, should have taken the hair down. Uh, no, 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 right? <laughs> Exactly. Like he doesn't even have that hair anymore. I took it. Yep. Uh, JD making gumbo or Bo blending tobacco. Ooh. I, I, I'm going to go with JD uh, making gumbo. I'm going to go with JD, JD making, making gumbo. gumbo. Yeah. 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 I, I have tried. Yeah. There's a reason why. Yeah. Stick anyway, to gumbo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> JD making a uh, cleaver ad break. Clever. Clever. <laughs> clever. JD making a clever ad break uh, tie ins or Bo making Squire select pairings. <laughs> you've, um, made, you've made some break-in before i've done it occasionally i would actually rather i think Bo make squire select pairings oh thank you i, I could see that yeah, yeah. I, I think you do i think you for do very specific tobaccos i feel like i yep. could actually make some really quality pairings like yep. you know at random and maybe not but but for very specific ones i definitely think i could yeah uh so i'll go with you on that one uh and then finally jd smoking the rhino uh or Bo smoking the bing the rhino, of course, my rocks pipe. No, that's the, uh, right. Morta. That's right. I I could uh yeah, mortar pipe with the stainless steel shank. Uh, I I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna put Bo on the Bing. Yeah, I I think you could rock a Bing's favorite. I I, I really do. So, like, uh, there's something about us short people. Like, there's something about a really like svelte kind of long pipe. I, I I don't know. Yeah, I, no, we can make it work. I think you can make it work. I'll I'll say this. Yeah. Um, I agree. I'll take that as well. And I'll and I'll say this for the for my for my rhino pipe. Uh, the rhino pipe is amazing. It's a it is a certain look only certain people uh, can pull off. I am one of those people. The rhino pipe is a good looking pipe, but I made it look good. No, if you've seen the picture, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> there, you, there's you know a, what I'm talking a, about. Our, our dear friend Wes uh, took an excellent picture of you. He with that rhino. killed it. And um, I don't know what he photoshopped, but I look glorious in that photo. Yeah. And I like, you know, I yeah. should be the face of rocks. Uh, <laughs> it, it took uh, it, he, he definitely had to get the uh, the the premiere version of uh, Adobe Illustrator. Dude. That. Yeah. <laughs> Man, my rock, my rock, my rock spike, my, my rhino is always on me. No, it's, like it's, it is, it's, it's constantly in the yeah, car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to roll with it. All right, great questions. Freaky Friday edition. Well done, Dylan. That was very creative. Thank you so much. Yeah, for it was that. good. And of course, uh, quick fire questions are brought to us by the good folks at the Tent Society. Now, the Tent Society is this amazing online service where you sign up and monthly, every single month, not every single year, not every single quarter, but every single month, pipe tobaccos are delivered to your door. A sampling of some spectacular, sensational, uh, salacious? That's not... No, no not, not that, salacious. Not that word. <laughs> Delicious tobaccos for you to be able to sample, expand your palate, and uh, figure out what you like, which is very important, especially for those of you who are kind of getting into the pipe tobacco world, into the industry, into the uh, hobby. And, you know, you don't want to ro roll into the store, pick up a bunch of tens, you don't know what you're doing. This is a great way to kind of expand your knowledge on a monthly basis from the good folks at the Tent Society. <laughs> Definitely not salacious tobaccos. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> with, with our good friends uh, at, at the Tent Society, what they do is they deliver the, the premium box concept to the, to the pipe world. And it's so great because in this uh, beautiful package that you get every month uh, is, uh, you know, a variety of tobaccos, premium tobaccos, some of which you've heard of and some of which you haven't but are all carefully curated from all over the world. Um, and so you'll get exposed to, um, you know, favorites, uh, things that you may enjoy, you may not enjoy, but you'll get to try different things that uh, are going to broaden your palate and uh, really uh, expose you to some things that, um, you know, you wouldn't necessarily have the chance to try otherwise without committing to a whole 10. So uh, go to 10 society.com. You can use the code squire when you sign up and that's 20% off your first month's service at 10 society.com. We really appreciate them for, for sponsoring this show. All right, man. We got some great quick fire questions. Nope, that's what we just did. Sorry, guys. Just kidding. Just kidding. Listener feedback mm. is what this is. Uh, man, we got some great listener feedback. First, coming in from our, our boy Dave Allen of the MC Pipecast. That's the Maple City Pipecast. Uh, what did Dave have to say? Oh, look at that. Okay, yeah. Hey, guys. Just finished listening to the Pipe Nook spot. 
uh, spotlight. spotlight and really enjoyed it. I do have one correction I need you I need to let you know about oh, something you got wrong uh, during the quick fire question. All right. Now, one of the questions asked uh, was between poutine and disco fries. Poutine is not just fries and gravy, but fries, cheese curd, and gravy. That's true. I did I, I did forget that part. Interesting. Uh, okay. Some use any kind of cheese uh, uh, in a pinch, but uh, the cheese curd is traditional. Uh, if I didn't let you know, I would have uh, to turn in my Canadian citizenship. Ah. <laughs> Been listening to and watching the show for just over a year now and love the content. Uh, keep up the great work and have good smokes. And that's from our friend Dave at MC at MC Pipecast. Uh, and man, we're so thankful for that. So yeah, uh, dude, so that's correct. The addition of the cheese curd, and I totally forgot that. That's every time I've had poutine in my life, which I can count on two fingers uh, the times that I have, uh, has, has uh, had the uh, the cheese curd. Yeah. What is it? What a cheese I, curd I don't even know like. what that is. Is it like cottage cheese? Well, no, or it's, is it so I remember this the from- The curd, is it that they- uh, I remember this is a combination of Little Miss Muffet who sat on her top of eating her curds and whey. Uh, and then that is salacious. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and not just that, but also from reading rainbow where, uh, LeVar Burton took you into like a, a cheese factory where they yeah. separated the curds from the way. And so like, it's, you know, the, the way, if I'm remembering accurately is more of like the liquid form of the milk cheese process and the curd is what would eventually go on to kind of pack and congeal and become the cheese so okay. it's kind of almost like these like okay like little um I think of like the consistency of like ground beef like that's like all like separated out not not like in in like a in like a lime but like when it's all clumpy and that's what it like curd is okay but it's okay. cheese instead of beef <sighs> pre-cheese this is disgusting. Anyway. Okay. Um, <laughs> thanks, Dave. Thanks no, that's for, good. Dave, that's that good. Very good qualification there. Yep. Uh, speaking of keeping us honest, man, up next we got, of course, our, our uh, good friend of the show, Doug Owen. What did Doug have to say? I love, every time Doug writes in, I'm so honored, man. He says, uh, hey, guys, uh, it's been a long time since I practiced law. Apparently, Doug practiced law. Oh, uh, Doug but, did everything. Hey, he's done everything. He's done everything. But as I recall, uh, one of the tests when a trademark infringement lawsuit was being brought was a test called the likelihood of confusion. This test. is this is good. This goes to our Dunhill clones episode from last week. Well, likelihood of confusion is what uh, happens every time Country Squire Radio airs. Wow. Uh, <laughs> uh, the likelihood of confusion test, where the court will look at whether the reasonable a reasonable consumer looking at the item would likely be confused as to the origin of the trademarked item. In other words, in the case of the Dunhill clones, uh, would a nine six five smoker assume that nine 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 would be exactly the same product as nine six five? Uh, now, the interesting part of this to me as a pipe smoker and a former practicing attorney is that if I looked at that 10 of 999, my rather snobbish Dunhill attitude about these tobaccos would be that I would presume right off the bat that 999 might be similar, but I would be confused to the point of assuming uh, it was a perfect copy of 965. Uh, not a chance. As JD said, I'm sure. And I'm sure remembers when Dunhill left the market before 2010, Sutliff tried to duplicate early morning pipe and 965, among others, naming them similar names, but with little success. The only objection I would have to the K and K clones is that, which are the clones we talked about last week with mm -hmm. the pulled chickens on them and all that stuff, <laughs> is that the names are really tacky and frankly sophomoric. Uh, the latest rumor I heard was that STG may be rethinking whether uh, to let the license lapse. Ooh. If that is the case and STG continues to produce the original labels, then the K&K &K clones will be in trouble. Anyway, this is the kind of stuff uh, that makes attorneys rich, and that is one of the many reasons I escaped uh, to re-enter small retail, which was always, always my first love. Hmm. Uh, I will mention as a that as a pipe smoker of over 50 years, one of the reasons all of us old-timers say that these new tobaccos are not as nearly as flavorful as the old days is that my taste buds are now 70 years old wow, yeah. <laughs> and not nearly as keen as they were 50 years ago. <laughs> Keep puffing. I, I appreciate that last comment from Doug. Good good sense of honesty there you know we have a lot of yeah, our, our live studio audience is is, uh, is clapping you know we, there um there's great uh great tobaccos on the market and and a, a lot of you know folks over time your your taste buds just you know maybe aren't what they were or, you know things change your preferences change and um there's that whole uh rosy you know glasses looking into the past thing and so uh yeah i, I appreciate that that's 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 good but um yeah good good stuff uh, would you think necessarily as a pipe guy i would look at that and be like is that the same thing as early morning pipe 
well, no, but you know, I, I would, uh, you know, think that maybe it's a good try to, to duplicate it. Although, you know, like you said, is the, uh, you know, cloning, are they tacky and frankly, rather sophomoric as, uh, as Doug puts it? Well, yeah, I'd, I'd tend to agree. Okay. So uh, yeah, far be it for me to, to, um, to try to, you know, push back on this, especially with Doug, um, who is a legend at apparently everything. Uh, but like he admits that he's he's looking at this through two brains, right? Yeah, it's the legal brain, but it's also he's he's an educated consumer in the situation. Sure, yeah, an enthusiast. I would argue that most people are idiots, not people that watch or listen to this show. They're amazing. They're, no, they're no, not not at all geniuses. Right. <laughs> Intelligentsia out out the you know, but but most people, I would say, are probably not that discerning. And so, like, I'm thinking, I'm thinking about like the newer pipe smoker comes in, you know, had uh, um, the idiot society is going to write a terrible review of us tonight. That's fine. They'll yeah. end up reviewing Brian's show because they're idiots. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, for, <laughs> sorry for all the one stars, Brian. Uh, oh, that's terrible. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, but here's the thing: like, I do think about the new pipe smoker that may have had something that's <laughs> so <laughs> funny. <laughs> And then they go back because I all right, think about all the people that like got in and had Frog Morton as one of the first first like um, uh, tobaccos they just absolutely fell in love with. Yeah, right. Sure. All right, so they come back and they start seeing Frog Morton's not around. Well, let's say that fast forward to you know a year or so, uh, someone comes out with you know Toad's Basement. I think we we kind of made the joke of right, that right. As being a clone. instead of uh, Frog Morton selling. Yeah, right. Toad's Basement. They can't remember. They only had Frog Morton once. They remember, oh, it had like a, a a little green thing on it, and he was underground in his in his basement. And look, there's a toad in his basement. There's a so toad I'm, in his basement. I'm gonna pick this yeah, up. A toad's basement. I don't know. From that standpoint, on the bayou, <laughs> I think I think there is an aspect of like you know, I mean, for the educated for the educated consumer, great. But we're in an industry where you know, for for our listenership, for our audience. We, we kind of represent the educated consumer. If you're listening to a podcast about pipe tobacco, chances are you're either educated or you're educating yourself about yeah, that's fair. the thing. Yeah. But most people that don't listen to this podcast or aren't actually kind of going out of their way to educate themselves are going to kind of fall into that. So I don't know. That's the only thing I would say to that is that, <laughs> like, I... I I don't know. I don't know, Doug. Like, send me more information on that, on, on where you think. Because because, because, like you say, you're you're a discerning consumer, and I'm just kind of curious about that. Oh, it's it's my it's kind of like a it's that's as an aside, but it's pretty close, all things considered. To, I, I, uh, I just you know, I, I agree with them in that I just think all the uh you know the it's just so fun. What do they call it? Like instead of nightcap, it was like a nightclub. 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 <laughs> but it wasn't just Dunhill that. nightclub. It wasn't just that. It was also it was a combination of the name, but also the the exact color, the exact I mean, not the, necessarily the exact font. The old sign. Or what was it? There was a couple of. There Did were, you post the awful. pictures to Facebook? Uh, no, I tried to email them to you for some reason, but they didn't go through. Right. I, need, I need to do that. We, yeah, again. we need, we need yeah, to get those. They're, so they're just really, see. really bad. All yeah. right, I'm anyway, curious. Right, I'm not a legally. Uh, to be fair, like I, I have no legal like background or no legal concept of on how you know the law works or anything. But at the same time, <laughs> it just would seem to me that like somebody could sue somebody <laughs> yeah no that's right yeah i get it anyway that's all that uh, finally on itunes man we had an itunes review from eric it's a great podcast especially for new pipe smokers i'm just picking up pipe smoking and really enjoy your podcast tons of informative tips and opinions and lots of industry knowledge if y'all are taking suggestions i would definitely enjoy an episode explaining different tobacco leafs types and how to blend them to make your own blend well eric yeah, good I think this actually was probably written before the blending at home episode, but hopefully that provided a lot of great information for you. And who knows, we'll probably revisit that topic uh, again as you know, always, always irrelevant. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. The, the Twitter man, the Twitter has been crazy tonight. Uh, yeah. So, so multiple, multiple things. Uh, he says, uh, our, our dear friend, Brian says, uh, Bo podcasting without a shirt is salacious, um, which, which is extremely true. Um, we have, um, let's see. Portland Paul says, uh, you have a smudge on the camera over Bo's face. And I, uh, responded to Bo, or I responded to Portland Paul and said, that is Bo's face. Um, it, accurate. And, uh, let's see what else it, we got. And, and it's for everyone's benefit. Yeah, really. no, it, it is. It is. Uh, let's see. 
Uh, we've got um, uh, at Hockter, the love doctor, our dear friend. Uh, he says that he's going to start trying to blend some uh, tobaccos. He's got some uh, going to put together two blends that hopefully don't taste bad. I'll try my best. And uh, so he's got some different uh, different tobaccos that he's going to start experimenting with. I think a lot of folks have been inspired uh, recently by our um, you know blending episode. Hopefully we'll have some folks that uh, are getting into that which will be really great. Um, and, uh, and then finally our dear friend, Briar, or I'm sorry, our dear friend, uh, Brian again, uh, said my show is so bad that I had Bo as a guest. What? <laughs> to be clear, I want to make sure I'm being clear about what I was insinuating there. I wasn't saying that idiots listen to Brian's show. I was saying that idiots would be so confused about which show they were listening to that they would accidentally choose his instead of ours because they're idiots. Oh, so what are you saying about the listeners to, of our show? I'm saying that if there is an idiot council <laughs> that somehow came across that and they went looking for a pipe podcast, they would accidentally, idiotically find Brian's instead of ours. And then there's, there's, I, I was not meaning to, I'm sorry, Brian. I think this is another thing that can just have its own legs. And now we, this can be a new thing. This is, this is great. Yeah. It's the rivalry that we'll all. <laughs> <laughs> It's fantastic. Uh, Brian, come come back to Mississippi so we can get you back on, on the show, man. Have we ever done one with like the three of us and Brian recording at the same time? Not in lot. No, you've live. recorded with him and no. I've recorded with him, but we've never yeah. actually had like the three of us. That needs to happen. It does need to happen. Huh. Yeah. Okay. It, it may require us going to North Carolina, though. I don't mind going to North Carolina. I uh, love North Carolina. Carolina's beautiful. Absolutely. Yeah, maybe we need to make that happen. Yeah, so. man. All right. Well, good stuff. Well, uh, great listener <laughs> feedback. Hey, by the way, shouts out, of course, to uh, anyone who has headed over to iTunes and written us a review. That's a great way to help out the show. Uh, but heading over to iTunes, writing a review doesn't cost you a dime to do it. Uh, and it's a great way to, you know, help folks find the show. That's right. It helps us a lot. Absolutely. Also, a uh, great way to help out the show, uh, if you are willing to spend a few dimes, is heading over to patreon.com slash Radio, where you can become a member, a club member of the Country Squire Radio International Pipe Club uh, and get gr access to great and wonderful things, like eventually the first 100 episodes of the podcast. By the way, Which were you being worked on? Quick right. update on that. I actually had a meeting uh, earlier today with uh, with my assistant, who is working very diligently on finding a solution. So hopefully we are getting closer rather than further away from that. We actually have a backup to the backup. We had a backup. No, I'm sorry. We had a backup to the backup in line before, which was a bet. Not a great scenario, but could be done. We now have a backup before that backup. I want to make sure I said that right, which is a better solution for uh, for for the listener, but not necessarily ideal on our end. And so we're trying to figure out if we can find that sweet spot, that Goldilocks. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, no, that's fair. And so so if we can find that, great. If not, we at least have a backup that's going to be beneficial to the listener. So one way yeah. or the other, that's coming. It's in the works. There's your update on that. And again, yep. that's going to be an exclusive for uh, patrons and club members as well at countrysquireradio.com is where you can find the links to become a club member as well as follow us on the social medias. I'm at the real Bo York on Twitter. I'm at John David Cole, or you can get us at the shop at, at underscore country squire. And of course the show's handles at squire radio, but all that information and more can be found at country squire radio.com. Uh. <laughs> dude i had fun tonight talk about orientals dude yeah this was a lot of fun man yeah, it was good it was good a lot of good a lot of stuff going on in the pipe world you know i feel like we uh lots of announcements and that, and that kind of thing this is good though yeah, yeah no you know there's good stuff it's it's uh you know to, to have kind of uh so much at the top of the show it does show a lot of uh, things that are going on in the pipe community both locally and online and uh you know in the general uh area too are you, you man when, when, when are you heading to Texas? I should have asked you that at the top of the show. Yeah, going going Wednesday. Uh, Wait, who's I'm, your... I'm sorry, Thursday. Okay. Um, so uh, we're going to go a night early because uh, my beautiful wife has a sister in Dallas. All and right. So we're going to yeah. go, go visit them, hang out with her and her husband and beautiful family. You got a sister-in-law um, in Dallas. I do. Yeah. I have a sister-in-law. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and so we'll do that and uh, enjoy some good uh, Texas food and uh, might even have time to sneak over to the Texas State Fair, which is going on. And uh, we'll uh, we'll go from there. Oh so, man, yeah. Watch it. I know what's going to happen. Since I'm not going to be there, I know they're going to talk you into doing a barbecue pairing, and like, <laughs> and y'all are going to take pictures and be like, "We got him to do it." Ah, yeah, you know, like, we got him to do it, man. I can't wait to hear about it, man. It's going to be fun. <laughs> It'll be a great time. All right, man. Well, let's go have a night. See you, brother. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Sorry about all Had the uh, yeah. craziness at the top of the show. No, it worked out good. Worked out good. Brian, thanks for still loving us, man. <laughs> thanks I, for still loving us. I, you you I came meant, first, dude. You came first. Yeah, but that's what I was trying to imply is it was meant to... <sighs> He says all his shows are available without any issues, Bo. <laughs> 
the gauntlet is thrown. See, I'm trying to the walk. The gauntlet is I'm thrown. I'm trying to walk back what I said, and he's great because he's like, no, don't walk it back. I no, don't want no, you to no. This back. is more stick. Than, yeah. You're right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it's good. He, he, one more reason to hit the mute <laughs> button or whatever that he gave us. Yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you're new to the Country Squire Radio, don't know who we're referencing. Brian Levine is a dear friend of our show. He has his own podcast, the Pipes Magazine podcast. Which you absolutely should listen you to. You have to check it out. It's it's a, it's a a He's the granddaddy of them all. I'm we saying that the idiots upset with Coke would write to Pepsi because they're idiots and they don't know what that's, that's the what difference I'm trying between to Pepsi say. and Coke. Yeah. So someone that's upset with us would write Brian because he they would think he was us. They were right. Okay, I got it. But that's okay. not. But they, it's impossible to confuse the two because he's like six feet tall and and we are small and have hairy feet. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And there's a level of professionalism <laughs> somewhere in there, <laughs> or not at all. Or not at all. <laughs> Good night, y'all. Bye, guys. <laughs> See ya. <laughs>